Tell me a little bit about how you see the violence in the city now, how that's changed during your time with Stop the Violence, and if you think it's getting worse or about the same. Well, you know, I worked in security since high school, you know, you know the violence was, was real bad, and they're doing a gang bang in the Little Rock area, but I actually think, uh, you know, right now that it's a, it's a little, little worse. I don't think he had as many as uh, aggravated assaults in, in the shootings. Uh, but it's, uh, it's, it is out of control, and we need to have a sense of urgency about it, and uh, we need to work collectively uh, together with it, with the community, uh, the police department, uh, city hall. It's gonna, it's gonna take everyone. Well, one thing about it, you know, I find out you can't police yourself out there. You can't do it. And uh, it's gonna take, you know, many, many uh, avenues, uh, like uh, having conflict resolution, you know, mental health uh, and workers. Uh, yeah, it's going to take uh, other um, faith-based organizations. You know, our church is, not, is getting involved as a whole. Uh, I, I've been to, you know, many churches uh, and asking the pastors, you know, to get involved. And they actually said, that, you know, they're afraid, you know, to get involved in the community. Uh, one thing we got to do is get out these four walls. You got to take it from the church seat to the streets. And also, you know, I think churches need to have activities where in, in the afternoon after, after school, you know, because, you know, out of mind, old saying is the devil's workshop. You know, teach some uh, life skills and yeah, have some tutoring there. You know, have, you know, computer classes, you know, for these kids. Uh, Can you talk a little bit about how people who maybe are not caught up in these beefs that are causing shootings, but are still in the neighborhood, they're still being affected by gunfire, by stray bullets, and are concerned about that. The time of the victims. Mm -hmm. Oh man, I mean, I mean, my my heart goes out to them because uh, you know, you, you you have to live in fear. Yeah, you, you can't sleep. You know, worry about when it, you know when they're gonna shoot your house up again. Uh, and uh, one thing about it, um, a neighbor's going to get more involved. I mean, you know, it it. it it's really sensitive, but in the black community, we can stand out on the corner and a drive-by shooting happen. There'd be a hundred black people out there and, and nobody seen anything. Hmm. But you go in the white neighborhood, they can tell you the shoe side, the shirt side, the underwear side. They made it, they, they, I mean, they give brief description, but I've never seen that. You know, and I watched the first 48 all the time. And in the black community, we had this no snitching thing, uh, and it's a bunch of foolishness because that's why neighborhoods are getting as bad as they are, because you know the police and they keep you know like, like I said, even though I didn't uh, care for Kid Buckner, the ex police chief, he said you can't not police yourself out of, and you cannot do it. It's impossible to do it. You can put a police on every two, every two or three blocks, but you're still gonna have crime. So we got to get our neighbors more involved in what's going on. And I think uh, our neighbors are a little bit afraid of retaliation uh, in the sense of if, if you call, mm -hmm. the police come to your house. And they don't want that because those guilty individuals, they're watching and lurking. So when the police leave, their house is going to be a target. Uh, I live out Westway. And what happens if you come out there speeding, turn the flips, you know, everybody's calling and we've already instructed the officers don't come to our house mm -hmm. and, and they know not to come but when you come to this side of the freeway they're going to come to your house and and you're not anonymous so what the community do they just don't say anything because that keeps them from being involved with retaliation and they are going to retaliate mm -hmm. can you talk a little bit about what you feel like the city and the police are doing um and, you know, you say we're not going to police our way out of this. But I think you both acknowledge that it's a combination of community mm -hmm. involvement and better policing. Um, what do you think the city and the police department has done well so far in addressing this and what still needs to be done? You know, back in the early 90s, Chief uh, Louis Cardell, he went to a zero tolerance and... Uh, he came to me and my mentor, uh, Mr. Robert St. McIntosh, who's a longtime activist here in Little Rock, and he wanted you know, to do a zero tolerance. And uh, 
he said, I want you to come out and just get out and ride at night and uh, see what we're doing. And I, I tell you what, uh, Grant, I can hardly go four or five blocks without someone being pulled over. And, and it was very effective. It got a lot of illegal guns off the streets. Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, one thing about it, in that situation, uh, you don't want to have, you know, where you're affecting law-abiding citizens. You want to, you know, have to find a way to, to target those ones that are, that are doing these uh, heinous acts. And, you know, and it's, it's, a, it's, it's kind of, you know, a rough line, you know, if you go, go to a zero tolerance. Uh, but I, I think, actually, that uh, Little Rock it needs the help of the Plastic County Sheriff Department. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they have more, have more manpower. And uh, I, I, I think those, those agencies working together uh, can, can help, you know, put a dent in, in a lot of this. But uh, the main problem, we're going to get uh, these, these guns off the streets and out of the hands of uh, special men, you know, and the teenagers, man, you come with 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 year old that have handguns. Where are they getting these handguns? And I think uh, they have to work with the ATF uh, and targeting uh, who are putting and distributing these guns out in the street. You know, I like the program they uh, implemented down, what, I think that's Treeport, Louisiana, where the dads are going up to the school. I like that program, and I know over the H Street Baptist Church over in Little Rock, uh, the, those guys came here. And, um, uh, you know, I think, you know, seeing more male presence in the school, if, you know, we had that area of school. I, I know when I was uh, work security at our school, they had the watchdog. I think his dad's a great student, and that, that, that helped relieve a lot of the uh, uh, the issues you had uh, with discipline in the schools, too. You know, having the parents come to the school and work hands on with, with the children and eat lunch with the children and being a mentor to the kids. So uh, I just uh, I hope that program is be effective here, and you know here in our state, and especially in the city of Little Rock, because it is it, it, it is much needed. But one main main ingredient, and, and the people don't know this prayer in the school. We can still pray at the school. You know, it says separate church and state. Well, before school and lunchtime and after school. They can still pray, and the teachers actually have to make sure that they're protected. Uh, and this is by law. So someone needs to give the knowledge of that because prayer does change things. And, and people would say, well, my baby could just pray. Yes, their baby could just pray on their own. But it's different when we're collecting prayer. It's a whole different reception and so that needs to be pushed, that prayer. If they won't change, we have to put aside our differences uh, and, and get this prayer in the school and let's watch the change and it works. And all they have to do is try it and they'll see. Because we have people dying now. 